Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the whole of Israel, you Hebrews are likes, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahiah, not Allah. It's Yahweh. And His only begotten Son name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapos Christos, not Yeshua, not Yahushua. It's Yahweh Shai. So gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Raka Kurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, whether concepted or not. And a sincere salutation to all the Akim, pushing the truth and believing this truth to the four ends of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And Shalom to the Akwath who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from Jim Messalano, Camp, coming at you another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and edification. Another day of vacation, Lord's willing, this be edifying. And this is <clears throat> another lesson on um, World War III. And as the Lord said, Habakkuk 1 and 5, He will work a work in our days, which we would not believe, though it be told to us. So, as all these different things is going on on the earth, World War Three is brewing up. So Lord wouldn't be able to find. For the drills. Now this video is is uh was put up today. And the title of it says Russia and its allies hold military drills near Afghanistan border. It says Russia and its allies. Hold military drills near Afghan Afghanistan border. Now, when you read in Obadiah one and seven, it reads, "All the men of that confederacy have brought thee to the border." So all the so all the allies of North America, Babylon the Great, is going to separate from North America, and they're going to join Russia, as the scripture said in Ezekiel thirty eight, that Russia shall be a guard to these other nations. So. The reason these other nations, the allies of North America, are going to separate because North America has been a bully for a long time to all its allies, taking their resources, right? Uh, putting sanctions on them. North America, Babylon the Great, has abused its authority on these other nations, and they're tired of it, man. And it's the Lord. That have these things into uh, play in the transition. So I'm going to play these. I got a few clips and I'm going to get some precepts. This is for educational purposes only. This is not for monetary gain. I do not own a copyright to these videos. This is for educational purposes only. Lord willing to be edified. It didn't take long for the drills to ramp up to the max here in southeastern Tajikistan. Six nations have brought together some of their most battle-ready units for target practice. And now you see, it don't tell you what six nations this is, these are, but it, it say Russia and its allies. And there's going to be many other nations that's going to join North, uh, that's going to join Russia and separate from Babylon and Great North America. An opportunity we could not miss. So we've been promised that today is going to be jam-packed with action. So right now, we're on our way through some very rocky terrain to witness the work of some multiple rocket missile systems. As we enjoy a bumpy ride to the artillery positions, helicopters open the act. Then the ground troops join the fun, hitting their imaginary targets with all they've got. is intense. Sometimes it's simply impossible to see what's going on. So much sand and dust is in the air. 
What we can see clearly from our position, the approach of the truck-mounted rocket launchers. They stop, take aim, and await the command. And then they receive it. are the Grad multiple rocket launchers used in conflicts all over the world. Libya, Yemen, the Nagorno Karabakh conflict last year, all the way back in Vietnam. You name it, they've most likely been there. It seems to be there's no branch of military that is left out in these drills from special forces to heavy artillery to tanks to infantry, you name it. It seems only the nuclear branch seems to be left out, but that's, well, for everybody's good really. All this force here is obliterating the dunes and mountain slopes which are a mere 8 kilometers away from the Afghan border. A raw demonstration of power. Intended to be heard much further afield than where the artillery is falling. Amikashdana reporting from Tajikistan, RT. See, this is what's going on around the world, man. As the Lord said in, uh, in Joel 3, he told these nations to beat their plowshares and the swords and their pruning hooks and the spears, right? Let the weak stand strong. Meaning, instead of investing your money in crops and food, take your money and invest in military power, which is these intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? These jets, these uh, war hall, these helicopters, right? All instruments of war, man. So here's another clip. This is titled UN Security Council to hold emergency meeting over latest lunch. So check this out. North Korea missile test. New type of ballistic missile successfully launched from a submarine. The latest in a flurry of tests in recent weeks as Pyongyang pursues an ever more advanced arsenal. State media reports the missile has lots of advanced control guidance technologies, which could give it stealth capabilities, and says the weapon will greatly contribute to putting the defence technology of the country on a high level, and to enhance the underwater operational capability of our Navy. The US says the missile tests are a threat to the region, and has urged North Korea to rejoin de-escalation talk. And it is a threat. The Lord's the Lord mentioned this, man. Matter of fact, let's read it. I was just quoting it, but let's read it. This is Joel. Cause see, at, at once upon a time, only North America had uh missile capability, man. Right? They had the um the, the, the atomic bomb, which they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What is it called? Fat Man and Little Boy. Well, now all these nations, uh, you see that what, what happened was they took these German scientists, right, their Operation Paperclip, and they split the atom, man. And now they have nuclear capability. They have these uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now all the nations have this. This is Joel 3 and verse 9. It reads, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. Plowshares and pruning hooks are tools used for agriculture. What well, the Lord is saying, forget that. Take that money and put it into intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right? Military power. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. So, all the weak nations that used to be weak. Now they are becoming strong. And North America is not the only one that have intercontinental ballistic missiles. We call on the DPRK to refrain from further provocations and engage in sustained and substantive dialogue. And our commitment to the defense of the Republic of Korea and Japan remains ironclad. Uh, these launches also underscore uh, the urgent need for dialogue and diplomacy. Our offer remains to meet anywhere, anytime, without preconditions. 
In a reflection of international concern, the UN Security Council will hold an emergency meeting at the request of the US and UK. North Korea's firing of the missiles is in breach of the UN Security Council resolutions and I strongly condemn the action. I just held a National Security Council meeting where we collected information about the missiles and discussed our own measures. Meanwhile, South Korea's first domestically produced rocket is preparing for liftoff. A crucial step in its plans to launch surveillance satellites, which security officials say will be a constellation of unblinking eyes to monitor its northern neighbour. Liz Maddock, TRT World. See, this is going on, man. <laughs> this is what's going on, man. And of course, there's a threat. Uh, China just said, I think I did a lesson on about a week or two ago. China just said to, um, they told uh, North America to meet them in the air, man. Meaning prepare for war. Well, when you read over day one and seven, it said all the men of that confederacy have brought thee even to the border, man. So all these nations that used to be joining North America, Babylon the Great, is going to separate, man. Here's another clip. But the main point in this lesson is about how I said Russia and its allies was doing military drills in the Afghanistan border, man. Because Russia was going Russia is going to be a guard to the other nations. That's why Russia sent the nations these S-400 systems, man. Missile defense systems. Because that's prophecy in Ezekiel 38 playing out. Let's play this. Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's Dina Calmetta here. And for today's news, I have quite a few headlines I'd like to share with you. And I'd like to start with Russia. As it is being reported on Wednesday, Moscow's Ministry of Defense said that a pair of the country's Su-30 fighter planes took off and followed two U.S. B-1B strategic bombers over southeastern Europe. And the other day, <clears throat> I was looking at this uh, news. Russia, one of Russia warships, um, made one of the U.S. warships lead lead the area, man. It's not. This is this is not something that's uh out of the ordinary, man. Cause the prophecies say so. After the foreign aircraft was detected in the region. The ministry said in a statement that Russian fighter crews identified the aerial targets as two U.S. Air Force supersonic strategic bombers accompanied by two KC-135 refueling planes and escorted them over the waters of the Black Sea. After the foreign warplanes had turned away from Russia's state border, the Russian fighters safely returned to their home air base. It is reported that the U.S. bombers did not violate the border and the Russian planes carried out the escort in compliance with international airspace regulations. In the meantime, President Putin showed off Russia's military strength to the world as massive invasion war games were staged in the Black Sea, near the Ukraine. More than 40 Russian vessels and 30-plus military planes and 20 helicopters took part in exercises in Crimea, with missile launches, practice bombings, and landings by amphibious forces. Now, you think this is for nothing? It's not for nothing, man. This is Revelation chapter 9 and verse 12. And it reads, One woe is past, which is World War I, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So that's World War Two and Three. One war is passed, right? And two more wars coming. It's Revelation eleven and fourteen. It reads, "The second war is passed, and we have, have we have had two world wars, right? The second war is passed, and behold, the third war coming quickly. World War Three. And what kind of war is this going to be?" This is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. This is how they fought in the ancient time, right? With shields and helmets and daggers and spears and swords. And they charged out at each other from both sides of the field, right? It's a, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. 
charge, charging out, right? And garments rolled in blood. But this, what's well, this? World War Three. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. From what? With what? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now, of course, these drills reignite fears in the Ukraine that Russia could annex further territory in the east on the border with Crimea. Now, in the meantime, while this exercise is taking place, Russia and China are in the Sea of Japan with their combined exercises. And of course, Washington stated that they're keeping a very close eye on China and Russia. I now, with is. all of that on the table, Russia has issued a stark warning against moves to allow Ukraine to join the NATO military alliance. Putin's government has described the entry of Ukraine into NATO as the worst case scenario as a fierce row breaks out over Ukraine's bid to join the powerful Western military bloc. And the Kremlin has stated that Ukraine's joining the NATO pact would be a red line for Russia's national interests. The Russian spokesperson told a French TV channel that Ukraine's accession to NATO would be the worst case scenario. This is a scenario that goes beyond the red lines of Russia's national interests. This is a scenario that could force Russia to take active measures to ensure its own security. Of course, we can understand your feelings. But we prefer that you Europeans become better informed. Because before the Russian troops were moved to that region, there were large NATO exercises held near the Russian border. Everyone talks about the concentration of Russian troops all the time. But nobody talks about the concentration of NATO troops. He also stated with a bit of sarcasm, It is not clear whether Americans will stay in Europe and continue to defend Europeans against those terrible Russians. See? The same way how U.S. was flaunting this military drills in the borders of Russia with their chest poked out. Russia doing the same thing with China, man. And we know according to prophecy that North America is going to be destroyed by Russia, man. This is according to prophecy. Everything that goes on on the planet Earth is contained in the scriptures, man. And it's always about the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And it's only begun saying Yahweh which are prophecy, man. You have these analysts can say what they want to say, man. Right? About America having the best military. According to the Bible, prophecies, Russia is going to destroy North America, man. It goes on further to report, NATO Secretary General Jen Stolenberg stressed that Russia has no influence over the decision of whether Ukraine can become a NATO member. He told reporters that a nation has a right to choose its own path. That See, that's the same That's the same way how North America speak, right? When they say these other countries has no no um, no um power to say what can go on, what, what can and what will. Hey, everything is about dictatorship, man. And you just got dictatorship going against dictatorship, man. That's just the same way how North America feel. That's why this guy right here, right, is part of, of NATO, saying what he's saying about Russia. Well, Russia saying the same thing about North America. You can't tell us, oh, this guy did less than the other week. This guy, you know, the president of Turkey. Because U.S. is pissed off because Turkey is buying, buying jets from North America, but buying missiles from Russia. Well, U.S. going to tell this guy he can't do that. Well, he told the Turkey president told North America, you can't tell me where to spend my money at because he tried to buy. He tried to buy uh, F-35 jets from North America and missiles from North America. But North America wouldn't sell the Turkey president missiles. So he said, OK, I'm going to get my jets from y'all and I'm getting my missiles from Russia. And you can't tell me where to spend my money at. See, nobody's scared of North America anymore, man. None, none of these nations is scared of North America because they can easily go run to Putin, man. Because the prophecies say in Ezekiel 38 that Russia will be a guard to the other nations, man. So these nations are not scared of North America no more because they because they have other allies on the other side of the waters, man, which is Russia, man. That includes also what kind of security arrangements it wants to be a part of, including whether it wants to be a part of a member of NATO or not. So the message is that it is for Ukraine and the 30 allies to decide when Ukraine can become a NATO member. Russia, of course, 
has no say. So those are definitely some fighting words coming out of the UN, but also from Russia as well. So I guess we're just going to have to wait and see where this takes us. In the meantime, on Tuesday, Senator Tom Cotton reacted to China's hypersonic missile test by stating that China wants to be able to threaten the U.S. with nuclear annihilation. And China wants to be able to strike and hold at risk all of the continental United States. Mm. He said that the test is a reminder that the Chinese Communist Party wants to replace the United States as the world's dominant economic mm. and military superpower so that they can call the shots. You see that? <laughs> you see that? That's what's brewing up, man. <laughs> That's what's brewing up, man. North America will be wiped out, man. You don't got to believe it, man. And seeing you don't believe it, well, this is the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah. This is Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 5. It reads, Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye would not believe, though it be told to you. And we keep telling you that World War Three is brewing up, man. You don't believe it? The Lord said, okay. Okay. Again, for I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it be told to you. And we warned you, starting with the apostles of the Great Millstone, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, you have been warned, man, many times over. You don't have to believe it, but it's going to happen, man. As it said in Romans 3 and 3, it reads, For what if some do not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sins and mighties overcome when thou judge. Hey, you don't believe it? It doesn't matter, man. The Lord wrote it down already for us, man. Romans 15 and 4 say the scriptures were written a four time ago for our learning, man. And it will happen. And the prophecies is playing out, man. So they can dictate to the U.S. what our policies will be around the world and who we can and cannot support. And that they can hold all of the United States at risk with the threat to nuclear annihilation. Mm. He added that it's not shocking that the Chinese have been working on these hypersonic missiles. That's been known for a while, as has the United States. And we are still more advanced than China is. But China, as they are in so many other cases in their military buildup, is closing the gap. He further stated that given the advantages of the hypersonic missiles, it's not surprising that China is pursuing these because they want to be able to strike and hold at risk all of the continental United States. Hmm. In the meantime, as I'm sure many of you are aware. And the Lord say North America, Babylon the Great will be held. Will be held accountable for all the wickedness they have done on the earth, man. That's Jeremiah 51. Verse 8 and 9, that's Revelation 18, verse 4 and 5. That's 2nd Ezra chapter 11, 39 through 42. North America, Babylon the Great, will be held accountable for all the wickedness it have done in the earth. That's why I say in Jeremiah 51 and Revelation 18, their sins have reached into heaven, man. Because North America, Babylon the Great, is the harlot that made all the nations, that made all the kings of the earth commit fornication with them, man. Through what? Through his policies, through his legislations, through his democracy, through his philosophy, through his draconian laws, man. It's draconian measures. North America has destroyed the planet, man. That's why I say in Jeremiah 51 and 25, the Lord said he would destroy them who have destroyed the earth, man. And there's only one nation of people that's destroying the earth with chemtrails, with GMO foods, with contaminated waters. Passing all these different policies and laws. Like I said in Isaiah 10 and 1. Woe to him that decree unrighteous decrees. That right grievousness which they have prescribed. Right? Psalm 94 and 20 say. That frame mischief by law man. There's only one nation of people. That's destroying the planet. And we know who it is man. It's the Job 9 and 24. North Korea tested a novel submarine launched missile system and the launch became North Korea's first of its kind since 2019. North Korea's Academy of Defense Sciences said Tuesday that the test went off without a hitch and proved the missile's advanced control guidance technologies. According to the Academy, 
The new missile will greatly contribute to the advancement of the nation's defense technology and the improvement of the Navy's underwater operation capabilities. It goes on further to report that Washington's envoy to North Korea, Sung Kim, condemned the recent missile test, demanding that North Korea refrain from further provocations and engage in sustained and substantive dialogue. The Japanese prime minister deemed the test very regrettable, while the South Korean military said it would conduct a thorough analysis of the launches. So it definitely seems like North Korea has been very busy lately with these test launches of missiles. And I really don't think it's going to end anytime soon. But I will continue to keep you updated. In the meantime, let's talk about Israel and Iran. It is being reported by the Times of Israel that Israel has approved a budget of some 5 billion shekels or 1.5 billion to be used to prepare the military for a potential strike against Iran's nuclear program. Hmm. The NIS $5 billion budget is made up of NIS $3 billion from the previous budget, an additional $2 billion from the next budget slated to be approved by the government in November. It includes funds for various types of aircraft, intelligence-gathering drones, and unique armaments needed for such an attack, which would have to target heavily fortified underground sites. And this report comes just days after the U.S. Air Force announced that it had carried out a successful test of its new bunker buster, the GBU-72 Advanced 5K Penetrator. The 5,000-pound bomb could be used as a tool to strike Iranian nuclear sites. Mm. It goes on further to report that just last month, the IDF Chief of Staff told the Walla News site that Israel has greatly accelerated preparations for action against Iran's nuclear program, and a significant chunk of the boost to the defense budget was recently agreed and was intended for this purpose. So it certainly seems like Israel is preparing to strike Iran, and they're not keeping it a secret. They have warned about this in the past, and they are warning now that they're preparing for all options against Iran. So definitely very interesting as well as prophetic. Hmm. And with that said, I'd love to hear from all. Now you see, all this is brewing up, man. All this is brewing up. World War Three, man. So let me get to my closing precepts. This is Isaiah 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. The Medes is talking about the Russians, man. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. Their bows are talking about their missiles. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And this is the same thing that Esau Edom the Job 9 and 24 did to the Israelites, man. They didn't spare us, the old or the young. So the Lord said he put the spirit on these uh, Russians, on the Medes, to not spare no young or old of you other heathen nations, man. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, these excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, meaning with fire. That's the point. It shall never be inhabited. North America is going to be a desert land, just like the Sahara Desert. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelled in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pinch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. North America, Babylon the Great is going to be a desert land. By who? By Russia, man. By Russia. As I say in this video, Russia and its allies hold military drills near Afghanistan border. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 9. And it reads, For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations. You see, that's Russia and its allies. From the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence, she shall be shall she be taken. And th from thence, she shall be taken. The arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And who is this? It's talking about Babylon the Great being destroyed by Russia, man. 
This is um Obadiah chapter 1 and 7, and it reads, All the men of thy confederacy, this is the Lord talking to North America and his allies, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee, what does it mean to be at peace with them? You have joined yourself to them. And when you read in, in Daniel chapter 2, what did it say? It say they they it say the sons of the wicked shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. There's a separation. Okay? All the men of that confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Because they didn't have no choice. They didn't have no other choice to be at peace with North America, Babylon the Great, because North America had the biggest sword, man. They're blessed with the little butter sword. Right? So every nation was forced, either you're going to get the same way how they did Gaddafi, right? You're either going to get down and lay down, man, with North America. Either you're going to play ball with us or you ain't going to play at all. It say, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Why? Because the Lord said you put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to get a kingdom unto the beast until the words of the Lord be fulfilled. So this is the Lord playing chess with North America, Babylon the Great, man, with the elites. They said, they that eat thy bread, it say, and have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. So in open day, he went to seven, the Lord saying, he got these nations deceiving you like they playing game, like they, like they with you, but they're not, man. The Lord got this going this way until the elect gets sealed, man. And then the other nations of North America, the allies, is going to separate from North America and shoot missiles over here. Let's close with this. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. It reads, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh power, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. That means to bring Russia back to the old Soviet Union. War state, that war mentality, how they used to be. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth. And all of thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. This is just a few of the, the allies of Russia, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomer, of the North Quarter. So this is the Persians. This is Turkey. This is the Ethiopians. Libyan. Libya. It say. Gomer and all his bands. The house of Togomer. Of the North Quarters. And all his bands. And many people with thee. Be thou prepared. And prepare for thyself. Thou and all thy company. That are assembled against thee. That are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. So you see Russia. Is going to be the main key player. In World War Three, man. Now let me get this. This is revelation. <clears throat> this is what the Lord said was going to happen with this devil when he was loosed out of his prison. This is revelation 20 and 7. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And that word Satan just means adversary, man. Devil means deceiver. Satan means adversary against the Israelites, right? It say verse 8, and go out to the seed of nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, who? Russia. To gather them together to a battle. What battle? World War Three. The number of whom is at the sand of the sea. So the Lord is raising up these weak nations, man. And they're not weak anymore. They are full of power because this is the will of Yahweh Shema Shah, man. This is the prophecy of Yahweh Shema Shah playing out that Russia is going to destroy North America, man. Again, this is titled Russia and its allies. Oh, military drills near Afghanistan border, man. You see? It's the Russians, man. That all these other nations is going to join to and destroy Babylon the Great, man. So, Lord, when it's edifying, got to give all praises and then glory to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah. Bahashim Rekha Quraish. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, whether they can accept it or not. In the sense of salutation, Tell the Arkham, pushing this truth and believing this truth to the four ends of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole flu leg. 
And shalom on to that wealth who are listening and learning. The few sisters who are listening and learning. Lord, what is edifying? Till next time I say shalom. Wa abba babal. The wife for tuning in. May you help us. Shemal shall continue to bless you in your houses. Stay prayed up.